Okay, this is the third video of this series. I'm going to use the method of forces or consistent deformations, and I'm going to show an example in a frame. Let's say that you have this frame, and the problem is asking you to find the reactions and then plot the shear moment diagram. First thing, you have to realize that it's statically indeterminate and it has only one degree of indeterminacy or one redundant needs to be eliminated. I decided to eliminate dx for this particular problem. Now, why dx and not dy? The reason is because the structure that you leave has to be statically determinate and stable. And if you eliminate dy, then this structure will be able to move probably and it's not going to work. It's going to be an unstable structure. You could eliminate also here AX if you want to, and that will be another choice that you have. But for this case, I eliminated DX. So first step, work with the real static structure. Put everything over there. And in that structure, the first step is calculating the reactions because remember, if we are looking for displacement at DX, we have to find it right there, the displacement at dx, and I'm using virtual work for this. So the first step is calculating the reactions. In the static structure, it's really easy. You can do summation of moments here and calculate that, and then summation of forces in y, and then summation of forces in x, or you could have done summation of forces in x at first, and it's the same thing. Now, the virtual structure is the same one, the same geomet geometric shape, same conditions of support but the only thing that I'm applying is a virtual load here when you apply that virtual load over there then perfectly you can find the other reactions in this structure next step let's find the moment functions for the moment functions first I did a section one one here for both of them I'm gonna work with both of them simultaneously and when you do that I put here section one one from zero to ten you see there, from 1, 0 to 10. And you're going to measure x from this direction. That means that my intention is calculating that big M over there, the big moment. And if you do that, you can say summation of moments here equals 0. So you have M minus 40 times x equals 0. And then you can come with your moment function for that one. In this other case, we are calculating the small m and it's going to be just basically the same thing. It's going to be m minus 1 times x equals 0, so you can calculate your m as negative x. Now, I'm going to do another section here. And usually the books do that differently, but I don't like it too much. So it all depends on how you are measuring your x. I like measuring x always from here, from the previous section. So if this is x, in my case, and I want to calculate this m, my equation will look like, when I do summation of moments at this point, will look like positive m plus 40 times x minus this 40 times 10 plus x. When you solve it, you get a moment function of 400, and only 400. For this other case, the small m, you do the same thing. Some people don't do this additional section here. However, I like to keep consistency and every section that I do here, I do here as well. If I do a section here, I do it there as well. So whenever I do summation of moments at this point, then you have plus, plus m plus one times, and this distance will be 10 plus x equals zero. And then you can solve for m. And then we do a third section, one here and one here. Remember, the sections have to be done in the same way that you do the shear moment diagram. You have to find those points of interest, and those are the points that you're going. Those are the spans that you're going to do the sections. This one goes from zero to fifteen. So if I do that section over there and I measure x from this m, then I need to calculate this m at this point. What is going to be this m? Negative m minus 2, which is the omega here, the, the severe load, 2 times x, multiplied by x divided by 2, that's the location of that equivalent concentrated force, plus 41.67 times x equals 0, and you can solve 
for your big M. And for the small M, same sections, same style, measure it from the same way, and you have to calculate the small M. Small M, the equation will look like will look like if we do moment here, it will look negative M minus 1.33x equals zero, and you can solve for your positive M, I'm sorry, positive M plus 1.33 times x equals zero, and you can solve for your small m. Now at the end, these are the sections that we found with our moments in every single section. So if you want to calculate the deflection, horizontal deflection or horizontal displacement at that point, you apply your equation of virtual work. 1 divided by EI, remember EI is constant in this case, from 0 to 10, from 0 to 10, this times that, plus 0 to 10, 0 to 10 here, 400 times that one, plus 0 to 15, that was section 3, this function times that function. And when you solve for that, you get a value for the displacement, horizontal displacement at the point B. And you can see that it's negative here. Because I as well, we are gonna see why, but it's negative. Now you can have some different numbers here because of the approximation. This is not 41.67, this is 41.666. But it's gonna be almost like that. Now for the virtual structure, it will be used this square, this square, and this square. That's the beautiful part, because it's so easy. Once you have the, the, the static real structure, the virtual is just squaring, 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 and doing the integration. But you know the calculators can solve the integrals for you if you want to as well. And then you can calculate your coefficient of flexibility. Remember, this is the horizontal displacement caused by a unit law. Now you apply the compatibility equations, because remember at that point, there shouldn't be any displacement. The displacement should be zero. So that means that this plus the reaction, which is keeping it in place, times that coefficient of flexibility should be zero. And you can solve for your reaction in X. Now, this and this cancel out. And then you're going to find your value for your reaction in X. Once you have the reaction in X and you place it over there, the rest is just plain and simple statics. You can do a moment here and calculate that value, really easy. And then you can do summation of forces in X and Y and calculate these two values. After that, if you need the diagrams, you know, you have this value here. You just go up, constant, go down, 25 point, negative 25.5, go to this point and go to zero. Start with this value, which is 22.32. I don't know why the 32 is not showing here. 22.32 is affected by this negative load, constant slope, from down up to 7.68 and go up. And if you want the moment, same thing. We don't have any concentrated moment. So you can calculate this area here, 14.51 times 10. That's going to be that value. And then from here to here, same thing. It's negative. 25.49 times this distance, which is 10 as well. And then you get that value and goes to zero. Starts here with this value. You have to start this diagram here as well. And then this is a negative value. This is a positive area. Once you find this distance, it's just the area of this for the maximum. And the area of this will bring it to zero. So this is the example for the frame. I have in the channel a, a lot of other examples sold by hand, step by step. So if you want, you can go over there and watch them. Have a good day, guys.